Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course on selecting and installing printers and scanners. I'm James Messer, and I'll be your host through this module that steps through the requirements you need for the a Essentials Test 220-601, Section 4.2, where we need to identify the basic concepts of installing, configuring, optimizing, and upgrading printers and scanners. We are also going to take and learn information from 220-602, which is in Section also 4.2, where we need to learn how to install, configure, optimize, and upgrade printers and scanners. So what we're going to learn is dealing with the planning process, the selection process for a printer or scanner, how we would actually do the installation of that device, what we need to know afterwards once this device is in place, and if we ever need to upgrade the printer and scanner, what process do we go through? Well, we'll learn that today. Let's start with planning and selecting a printer or scanner. Where do you even start? Where do you even begin to pick what printer is right for the environment you happen to be working in? First thing you need to do is pick a technology. So whether it's a printer or a scanner, we need to understand what our requirements are for printing. So with printing, do we need a laser jet? Do we need an inkjet? We need to understand the advantages and disadvantages of all of these different printer technologies. So you may want to go back and look at the introduction to printers and scanners and the other module that we have so you understand what some of those advantages and disadvantages are. There are also different kinds of scanners. Some come in an all-in-one package. Some come in flatbeds. Some are paper fed. Some you can only use by putting the piece of paper down on a glass. So you need to understand what the requirements are for the person who will be using that scanner. We also need to see what operating systems are, combat are compatible with the type of printer or scanner that we're going to acquire. This is both important for printers and scanners because there's no guarantee that that printer or that scanner will work in both Windows and in Mac OS, or in Windows and Linux, or that even most of all of them work in, in Windows. But sometimes you'll find a scanner that's old or a printer that's old that doesn't work in the version of Windows that you're using. So you may have Windows XP. It may only have printer or scanner drivers for Windows 2000. So even though it says it's for Windows, be sure it's the version of Windows you happen to be using. You also need to be sure that you have the right kind of connectivity for this device. Does it connect you via USB? Well, if you're using an older system that has no USB ports on it, that might be a problem. You may have to find a different way to connect to this device. You, If you're installing this in an enterprise environment, you want to see if this printer or scanner has the option to provide network or print server support. So you may not want to plug this into a single computer that only one person can use. You may want to plug it into the network and have everybody in the organization have access to it. So that's an important thing to look at when you're ready to choose the printer or the scanner for your environment. Now once we know the basics of what we're looking for in a printer or scanner technology, let's think about where we're installing this. Where are we going to set it up? How are we going to transport it to the place where it's going to be installed? And finally, where is it going to live? Is this going to be out in the middle of a work area? A lot of companies will put their printers in the break room so that it, you don't hear them printing, they're out of the way, and you just walk over into the break room when you're ready to grab the printout off of the printer. And that way it's out of the way and out of the noise of anybody else who's working in the floor of the work environment that you have set up. You also have to think about power requirements. And this is especially something you need to think about when you're dealing with laser printers because they tend to really use a lot of power. So you want to be sure, the first, of course, that you're near an outlet. You want to be sure you have some power to begin with. Then you want to be sure that the power outlet you found is not also connected to a bunch of other laser printers and you no longer have the amperage you need to be able to run or drive this particular laser printer. These really kick in and use a lot of power when they start printing for the very first time. There's a lot of heat. There's a lot of uh, motors that start running. And so when it starts up, you'll know immediately whether you're having some some power problems or not. You may have a breaker go off because there's too many devices on that particular circuit. And finally, how are you going to cable it? How are, how are devices going to connect to this printer or to this scanner? Is it going to be for your network? You need to think about where you're going to cable your power. Is it going to be wireless? You don't have to worry about cabling. Those are the things you have to think about before that scanner or that printer is ever purchased. Now that we've decided what printer or scanner we want, we need to install it. So our first step is to find the printer drivers. We need to make sure that everybody in their 
or their Windows desktop or whatever operating system they happen to be using has the printer drivers specific for that printer. Now, we mentioned earlier that different printers use different languages to communicate. And one of those languages is something called PCL, Printer Command Language. This was created by HP. But printers can also talk other languages. There's something called PostScript. PostScript became commercially popular when Apple put the PostScript language into their Apple Laser Writer. At that time, PostScript was only available on the highest end printers. And Apple really made that capability available to the mass market. There's another type of interface called a GDI, a Graphics Device Interface. This is something very specific to Windows. But it's an application programming interface so that developers can create graphical applications in Windows and not have to worry if it's PCL or if it's PostScript. They know that Windows has the ability in this GDI interface to be able to send these images out or this text out to a printer. And it can scale at any size. It can print it on any type of printer. But your printer and your operating system has to be able to support Port GDI. And today, those are Windows-based operating systems in Windows XP and Windows Vista that allow that capability. There's also a need to watch for the type of scanner drivers we're going to install. And you'll hear a couple of names associated with scanner drivers. The first term you'll hear is one called Twain. Twain stands for technology without an interesting name. That's a little bit cheeky, but what it really is is a group of people that got together and said, we need to talk to a scanner, and we need to create a standard way to do this. At the time, this is 1992, this was a while back, there was no standard on how PCs talk to scanners. And scanners were becoming extremely popular. And so this was a very standard, very open application programming interface so that you could write software on your PC that would communicate to a scanner. And it would work with any scanner that supported this Twain method. And even today, you'll see scanner drivers use a Twain methodology to be able to communicate back and forth to that scanner. Most of the newer scanners, however, use something called Windows Image Acquisition, or WIA. And very often, especially in the newer scanners, they'll be able to communicate via Twain and via WIA. The WIA is a little bit broader perspective in how it grabs images from a device, not just for scanners. WIA is also applicable to cameras. So you can see why this new format came out as digital cameras became popular. It uses the same way to talk to a scanner as it does via a digital camera. This was brand new in Windows XP, but you'll see it as an add-on to XP, and it's something that's also embedded into Windows Vista. One of the steps that's often overlooked in the installation of a printer or scanner is the calibration process. And what we want to do with our color printer and with the output from that printer is have it match what we see on our monitor screen. Now, if you're working in an environment where you're doing a lot of desktop publishing, you probably have a very specialized monitor that's very true to the exact color of what you're working with. Those monitors aren't the ones that you'd normally buy for a computer. They have a lot more intelligent electronics inside. And the way that it puts the information on the screen is very different. So they're very often much more expensive than our regular LCD monitors we use today. There are differences in paper, differences in the brightness of paper and the color of paper. So we want to be sure that we calibrate our software and our printer so that it matches as close as possible what's on our screen. Now, if what you're outputting is usually text, you're putting out reports, this process may not be as important as it is if you're someone who works a lot with pictures or with graphics. So what we want to do is first match that image that's on our screen to what's coming off the printer and make sure the reds are red and the greens are green. Then you want to be sure to check the default options and settings that are for the printer. This is where you can set the default resolution. You can set the default scanning resolution and the default printing resolution so that every time a printout comes out, if you don't specify anything, does it print in draft mode or does it print in high quality mode? And this is important in an environment that's printing a lot because you're going to go through a lot of ink or a lot of toner or a lot of paper. So you want to be sure that you have those default options set properly. Another default option you'll see in large environments is something called a cover sheet. And that's the sheet that comes out before your output is printed. That way, if somebody else walks up to the printer, they see your name and all of the sheets of paper that you printed. They know exactly who that belongs to. They can set it off to the side, or they can drop it off at your desk because they know who printed that. And it's written right there on the cover sheet. Once your printer is installed, once your scanner is in place, there are a few final steps you should step through. One is to first connect to the printer. You want to be sure that it's working. So we want to print a test page to that printer. It's very easy to do this. This is actually built into the driver in Windows. Let me show you where that is. 
Here's our Windows desktop. I'm going to click my Start option here, and I'm going to choose my Control Panel. And under the, under the Control Panel is an option for all your printers and faxes. You can also get to this directly from the Start menu. There's an option that goes directly to Printers and Faxes. And then that gives you an idea of just how important the printers and the scanners are to this process that we have in our work environment. So here's a list of the printers that we happen to have installed. I have drivers for my Apple Color Laser Writer, my Epson Action Laser 1000, and my HP LaserJet 8150. Well, let's say I've just installed this Apple Color Laser Writer 12-600. If I right mouse click on that and choose Properties, the first option on every single printer driver in Windows is this option right here for Print a Test Page. And if I do that, it will go out to that printer. It tells me that the test page is being printed. Depending on how the printer works, it might be a minute or two for it to build that page and output it on a laser printer, or it might print it immediately. Once we printed the test page, we also have the option to troubleshoot our printout. So Windows has a troubleshoot button right on the screen that pops up a set of troubleshooting helps that tell us that we can't install it, the print quality is poor, nothing printed. It'll step us through some troubleshooting steps that we can look at to see if the printer's turned in, if we're able to communicate with it properly, and help you get this printer up and running as quickly as possible. If we've gotten the printout exactly where we'd like it to be, we've got the printer in place, we've printed our test print, or we've scanned a test print, and everything seems to be working properly, we're not quite done yet. The last and probably one of the most important phases is educating the end user. They've got a new printer now. They may have a new process for printing that they didn't have before. They may have this printer that's now out on the floor that they don't even know about. We want to be sure we educate our end users as to what's there. That very often is the most important part because that's the thing that's going to be left with the end users and how they can take advantage of this investment that's just been made in this printing technology or the scanning technology. So you do want to spend some time with the end users, whether it's through an email process that's sent to multiple people or sitting down at someone's desk who's going to be using this printer a lot and explaining to them exactly what we've set up and how to use it. And very often in environments, you can tell one person, and then they'll help tell everybody else exactly how this works on their floor or their environment and use all of the capabilities that are available to them. You will occasionally be in an environment where you need to upgrade the capabilities of your printer or scanner. There's a couple of things that you'll want to keep in mind when you're doing that. One of the ways that you do an upgrade is with the memory that's inside of these devices, especially laser printers. They use a lot of memory because they're rendering entire pages before they ever start the printing process. And if you're printing very high resolution graphics on that laser printer, it's going to need more memory. And if someone is getting an out of memory error on their laser printer, they may acquire some new memory and need you to install it. So you need to go through the manufacturer's instructions of exactly what to do when you're installing that memory inside of that laser printer. If a printer is having problems, it may need a firmware upgrade. So these new features that are inside the firmware or the bug fixes for the firmware are very important. You want to check the release notes. For uh, all in one printer that I was using at midnight every night, it would start an automatic cleaning process. And if you're in a home office, having a printer start up in the middle of the night and making a lot of noise isn't exactly the best thing. So a firmware upgrade was released that changed that to be midnight to 12 noon, which is probably what they were shooting for to begin with. Because during the day, you're not so worried about waking people up. So it's one of the things you may find is that it's not just a bug fix. There's some new and things that have changed. And the only way to new do that and know what's going on is is if you read through the release notes that came with that firmware upgrade. Finally, you may be in an environment, especially with these printers that print very large types of printouts, especially high-end graphics production, where they may need a disk drive physically connected to their printers or their scanners. And those disk drives are ones that work specifically with that printer type. So you may be asked to plug in or configure or install the disk drive configuration. And that's a scenario where you're going to want to have that manufacturer's documentation so you know exactly how to plug that in and then afterwards how to take advantage of that new technology. In review, we've gone from beginning to end. We've planned and selected the exact printer or scanner that we wanted. We've installed it into our environment. And after the installation, we've made sure it's worked properly and we've educated our users. And if we've ever needed to do an upgrade to the firmware or any other piece of hardware inside of those printer or scanners, we've given you an idea of things that you can look out for. For more A-plus videos, for our message boards, and much more, you can visit our website, freeaplus.com.